Today on Employment Law After Hours, we're going to continue on with our series of deviants in the workplace, and we're going to discuss theft and the employees that are stealing from you. Welcome back to another episode of Employment Law After Hours. Um, as with our prior episode, we're here with our distinguished guest, Amanda Wesh, who uh, is going to help us talk through theft in the workplace. Before we get started, we do have to say all three of us are attorneys at Brennan, Mana, and Diamond, but we're not yet your attorneys. Therefore, see the full disclaimer below in the description and take anything we say as informational purposes only. All right, Amanda. Yeah, welcome back to Employment Law After Hours. Um, as Brian said, we're super excited to have you on the show to talk about uh, all things deviance and this week, <laughs> theft. Monica and Brian, as you stated, <laughs> you may not know who's stealing from you. And in healthcare, that person may not even realize that it's theft or that it's is a crime. Uh, I don't want to talk about embezzlement today because mm -hmm. we all know about embezzlement, right. right? I want to talk about what kind of theft in the workplace I've seen in healthcare. And I think that there are different gradations of that. It could be just human error uh, that we forget to collect items from employees on their last day, or employees forget to return things back to the employer. But right. if it's something like a laptop, that is problematic because laptops are going to have potentially patient information mm -hmm. uh, on the laptop, so PHI, and that's subject to HIPAA, and it's also subject, in most cases, to state privacy laws. So what do you do in situations where it's kind of like an innocent theft? Well, the first thing that I recommend that employer do, because an employer is the one with the obligation, right? The employer is the one that's subject to HIPAA. So I just tell the employer, hey, call the individual and try to get the information back. Explain to them, you know, it was a mistake. I, you know, we think that you have this, you haven't returned it. Please give it back to us. We've got, you know, certain obligations under federal and state law. And, and you know that we have policies regarding this, we need to arrange for a time to get it back. Sure. I'm sure it looks like something different if that employee just so happens to fall off the grid or is a little less defiant than a, uh, yeah. yeah, I would love to meet up and give it back to you. Well, yeah, so if they didn't leave on great terms, mm -hmm. um, that could be a little more, proved to be a little bit more difficult for the employer. So in that case, yeah. I would send, if they're not responding to the nice calls that the employer's <laughs> making, that's when I would send the letter uh, via certified mail, via email, via any way that I can reach this person. You know, we have an issue. You need to return this. We hope that it wasn't intentional, but we've got some obligations under federal and state law. So do you. Mm -hmm. You could be implicated. You need to return this information. So you do then actually let them know, hey, you have these obligations under HIPAA and what we plan on fully enforcing those obligations if 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 you don't return this you know to us asap absolutely absolutely this obligation is going to look different if it's a licensed provider versus you know the receptionist at the front desk who might not be subject to licensure under hipaa uh, we have different gradations um, in civil and criminal penalties and that's going to depend on level of knowledge and level of intent and when we look at level of knowledge um, OCR, which is the Office of Civil Rights that mm -hmm. enforces HIPAA, is going to look at, did you know or should you have known? And so a licensed provider is certainly going to be held to a higher standard than a receptionist. And right. I've got a great example mm -hmm. of one where we had a, it was a receptionist that was terminated. Um, she had been on a performance improvement plan and she thought, well, I'll show them. She took her laptop home and she was going to write all of these very nasty things on social yeah. media about the employer. She did not realize that by doing that. Uh, she, yeah. you know, implicated HIPAA. And so when we, we knew that she had left on bad terms, we knew that she had intended to go on to social, I think she actually had maybe posted on social media, but when we sent her the letter and said, hey, you're in violation of HIPAA, you're in vi violation of state law, she was like, I didn't know, take it back. Yeah. How, how yeah. soon can you get here? <laughs> take it back. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was just someone who was not aware and we were able to very quickly mitigate. So uh, what about you know a provider who would be licensed and should know better? Well, in my experience, there's just different gradations. But if it's a situation where I took it and I intentionally took it, that usually signifies to me um, one of two things. One, I'm going to use the information uh, against you to compete. So maybe it's a patient list or uh, a list of referral sources. So, uh, you know, patient list and information is, you know, PHI under HIPAA, but we also have trade secret laws. They could be in violation of federal and state law in many different ways. Um, so usually if it's, if I take this information intentionally, I'm, I'm probably going to compete with you or make your life miserable. The, the second thing that I see is 
I'm going to turn you into every agency that I can. Uh, I'm going to turn you into Joint Commission. I'm going to turn you into the Department of Health. I'm going to turn you into your licensure board. And I'm going to use this information to show them that you were a bad actor or you were not doing things properly. And I actually had an instance where a disgruntled employee turned the employer into every single agency that would field a complaint. So it was not only the Department of Health and the licensure board, but it was also the uh, Chamber of Commerce at the county and the local letter level. It was the Better Business Bureau. It was actually the USDA. So we got a letter from the USDA. And finally, USDA was like, we want to go back to checking fruit. We do not want to be handling these complaints. Please resolve this. If you have an employee who's taking it uh, for purposes of, you know, taking clients or patients versus uh, turning you in for, you know, whatever it may be, are the ramifications for how you're using that or how you plan to use it different? That's a really great question. So if you are taking the information to compete or for your own personal gain, so for your own economic, what we call pecuniary gain, right. and it's a violation of HIPAA, that's going to automatically subject you to criminal violations. Sure. So they, you know, HIPAA says if you're using patient information in a way to benefit yourself for economic gain, then we're going to, you know, you're, we're going to subject you to criminal penalties. So there is a heightened level of enforcement there mm -hmm. than if you are t using this information to give it to an agency like the Department of Health. We typically will have federal and state whistleblower protections right. um, in those instances, but I would say that if you talk to any of the agencies and their investigators, a lot of the complaints are disgruntled employees, right? And <laughs> yeah. and uh, patients who are not happy. So if you have a patient who's not happy, give them a refund. Uh, Amanda, so when you're dealing with theft situations with your healthcare employers, is there a way to kind of be preemptive about this? Like, how do you go about preventing theft in the first place? Well, so it, I'm gonna harken back to what we said in previous episodes you have to have a policy. You wanna have something in writing that you can point to to say, this is our policy, this is our procedure, and you wanna make sure to do training and education. And so the first level that we talked about where sometimes we're human and we error, mm -hmm. and people may take things or may forget to return things, and as employers, we may forget to ask for things back, mm -hmm. it is good to have a checklist, and that's going to eliminate human error. Um, so make sure you have a checklist when you're terminating an employee or when an employee uh, quits, you know, what do you need to get back? If you're a healthcare provider, you definitely have to have a compliance plan uh, and you have to train on it. You definitely have to have a HIPAA plan and you have to train on it. And so you want to just drill in to your employees that there are legal requirements on them as an employee, as you as a healthcare provider, and what the ramifications are for non-compliance. Not only have those policies, but you train and educate on it. And then you want to let them know that you're going to audit. Right, so okay. I, I always love like, hey, don't forget, we're gonna audit our compliance. Yeah. So f uh, for HIPAA purposes, I'm going to conduct access audits. So I'm going to make sure that Brian, you're accessing what you're supposed to be okay. accessing. Only that patient information that you're allowed to access or need to access. I wanna make sure that you're not going into any of Monica's information. Sure. Um, and so you wanna let employees know, I do audit mm -hmm. and I look at access logs and so it just, I mean, I don't want to say big brother, mm -hmm. um, but it does promote compliance and let them know that, that you are sticking by your policies and making sure that you're following the law. Yeah, it, you would really hope that that plants the seed in the event that someone decides to start straying that, you yeah. know, if that name gets typed into a search bar, that sprouts like, yeah. you know, this it's, might come back. <laughs> especially with like celebrities in a hospital, right? If you have a celebrity comes into a hospital, yes. everyone might be trying to look at that, take that, sell that to TMZ or something. Oh. That's going to implicate those pecuniary gains under, under HIPAA. And I've had plenty of clients that have had VIP <laughs> patients and or high profile, you know, accidents. Um, and they, they're just curious. They want to see what's going on. And so they'll access the medical record. And that's that's not appropriate. So let them know that you conduct those audits and you will heighten your scrutiny of VIP patients. Uh, and then kind of along those same lines from a non-healthcare employer standpoint, you know, definitely be performing audits as well of your systems, especially if you're dealing with a lot of sensitive data which could be you know, very interesting to someone in the outside world who may be willing to purchase that data, um, you know, especially I think in your, like, in your science or your engineering fields where someone might be dealing with a secret product, you definitely wanna make sure you're in auditing that your employees aren't stealing that product to sell it to the outside world or you know, at, at top dollar. So that's not gonna implicate HIPAA because we're not dealing with 
right. exit health information, but that's definitely going to implicate your trade secret laws and then obviously your state uh, civil and possibly criminal theft laws as well. Well, that's all we have for you today on Employment Law After Hours. Thank you again for staying tuned. Uh, again, this is just another sub part in our five part series on deviance. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on those other parts and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks.